Welcome everybody. Welcome back to Homestead Heart. And on this beautiful rainy, rainy, rainy day. We've had rain for the last couple of days now, like I knew it was going to. <laughs> and you all, I am inside. I'm in the process of working on seed orders, getting seed orders out. But I needed to come and talk to you all today about a very important topic. And that's what we're going to be growing this upcoming gardening season. Now, when it's rainy outside, when it's cold outside, this is the best time to be inside planning your spring and summer gardens. Okay, so you all to get right into it with our um seed store there are going to be some things that we're offering on the seed store that we have never planted just to, just some things right and i'm going to share some of those things with you today but before i do i really want to get into just a couple of books that i'm going to recommend to new gardeners experienced gardeners too you know these things are very very helpful even if you kind of know what to do they make a very good reference as you are going through your gardening season now with the seeds some of the things that we're going to be doing that's going to be that we've never grown before and we're offering these on our seed store is our royal burgundy bush beans now this is a bush variety of bean right here and we're going to be growing these let me show them to you we're going to be growing these on uh in our garden this year now from my understanding these are an absolutely delicious bean when i was reading and studying up on them they have an amazing flavor and i'm kind of anxious to see what they taste like all right and not to mention i think the contrast in the garden because you know strike we 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 grow the strike bean we grow the j bean on our homestead right and strike by far in my opinion is the most prolific bush type green bean that we have ever 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 grown okay strike is going to always be on this homestead because it is so productive it is very productive and even with growing just a, a few plants you can get tons of green beans as long as you pick them regularly okay you just can't let them go they they're not going to keep producing you have to pick them regularly right and i don't know if you all remember but we did a video and i'll try my best to post that video link um perhaps at the end of this video but do you all know we harvested i think it was uh 15 gallons or 15 to 17 gallons of green beans and we actually could have harvested way more than that but we didn't we let a lot of them go to seed so that we can save the seed to have to continue to grow from season to season all right and that's going to bring me to my book too hold on i don't want to forget that point <laughs> but that strike bean in our opinion is probably the best uh uh, growing variety of green bean it produces very very heavy now jade is a good producing bean as well but it didn't compare to the strike the one thing I'll say about jade you know is that the flavor of the jade green bean to me is uh, I don't know it kind of reminds me of a good French style green bean the flavor does is it is better than strike i'm not gonna lie to me it does taste better strike beans are good the green beans are delicious but jade that is a delicious green bean they're just not as heavy producing as the strike so now when it comes to the royal burgundy i know that they you know are heavy producers but i won't be able to compare them to the strike or the jade until after we grow them now i'm not gonna grow the jade this year i'm gonna grow i don't know i might i might i don't know i might you will find out if i do <laughs> but you know last year we only grew the striped green bean and that's all we needed to grow all right now when it comes to the seed saving part of that seed saving green beans is so super easy 
in fact, if you wanted to, you can even just plant, if you were going to plant, let's just say, I don't know, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight plants, something like that. All right. Normally you'll have about three plants in a hole. I know that's what we do. We put a, like, we put three seeds in a hole and we let them grow from there. Not necessarily all of the beans will grow, but whatever grows, even if all three of them sprouted, that's fine. We let them grow, which is what we did. But even if you just planted just a couple of extra plants specifically for the purpose of seed saving, you will get a ton of beans, all right? You just let them go, let them dry out. Just don't harvest none, none of them and let them get all brown and dried up and everything. And you'll have yourself some beans to save or some seeds to save for the following growing season. All right, it's, it's that easy, okay? Now, one of the things I'm gonna talk about before I get to that next, what the other thing that we're gonna be growing is this book right here called Seed to Seed. You know, I always recommend like, if, if you're gonna be buying seeds from our seed store or any seed shop, no matter where you buy your seed from, this is this book right here and there are a few others that i've looked into but i think i like this one the most right it's very comprehensive it's a very comprehensive study on this book and it gives you great information you all this book is called seed to seed you see i got all my little tabs in here because i'm always uh, going back to this book to reference different seeds that I might be saving. But this book is called Seed to Seed and it's by Suzanne Ashward. And I think this book is in our Amazon shop. I put it in there a while ago um, when I recommended this book to a lot of you. So while you're getting your seeds, remember you're going to want to learn how to save those seeds as well. As long as you are growing an heirloom variety or an open pollinated variety, um, of whatever you're growing, definitely think about investing in a book that's going to teach you how to properly save and store your seeds. Okay. All right. So now another thing that we're going to be growing that I'm really excited about, let me move this out the way. You all is this right here. Now this right here is, um, uh, These are these golden Detroit beets. Y'all know how I feel about beets. I've always thought beets taste like dirt. I've never liked them, ever in my life. I always thought they was just disgusting, right? But I'm gonna try this golden Detroit beet. I'm gonna see if the flavor is better. I have a Ruby Queen over there too. I don't know if I wanna try it or not. Mr. H likes beets like every now and then. He's not, he's, he's not the beet person. He can't eat burnt beets all the time, you know, but I figure let's try the golden Detroit and I may even plant a few of the Ruby queen just to, for him to see if he like them. Right. So I'm excited to try this golden Detroit beet. And I am hoping that the flavor is different from what I've tried in the past, which was that bull's blood beet. I've grown them in man they were horrible i feel like i had a just dirt <laughs> so i'm excited to try this and also you all the black diamond watermelon we have these as well you can see these seeds right you can see them they big so i'm excited to try these but i'm still gonna keep trying to grow that um i'm calling it yamato yamato cream watermelon i want that watermelon and I got the seed from uh, Baker Creek, right? And they don't even carry those seeds anymore. They have what is called the Silver Queen, but I am really stuck on that Yamato cream. And I don't know if they stopped carrying it because maybe people weren't having the best of luck growing it because I know it, it was very difficult for us to grow that watermelon. I successfully grew one. And while it was, I could tell it wasn't quite developed, but at the same time, I could kind of get an idea of what it would taste like. And it got me all happy. And I have not been able to grow that watermelon. So I'm gonna work really, really hard to grow that Yamada cream. I am down to like six seeds. That's all I have left and they not even offer it anymore. So I'm gonna do my best. 
to kind of nurture and baby that plant so in hopes of getting some delicious Yamada cream watermelon okay and also you all I think I mentioned oh now this right here you all I haven't grown these in a very long time in fact it's been years in fact I totally forgot about this I had totally forgotten about this but when I saw it at the market I knew exactly what it was before I even read it. I knew what it was, right? And I hadn't seen it in a very long time. But to me, this is probably the best tasting melon I have ever had in my life. And I know it's a lot of them out there and I haven't tried them all. But the ones that I have tried, this is the absolute best. And this, you all, is canary melon. Now, I don't know if many of you are familiar with this, but it is a delicious melon. It has kind of like um, this sweet, creamy, citrusy flavor. And it just makes you just kind of want to keep eating it. And it's full of water, right? Full of water. But it just, it just you never get tired of eating it. Like when it comes to any kind of uh, melon, cantaloupe, you know, honeydew, all the other nice melons. Yes, I've tried several of them, but this one right here is by far like the best tasting melon, canary melon. And if you're afraid to grow it, don't be. It's very simple to grow, but you do kind of have to, you have to kind of baby it, you know, initially for this because you don't want the plant to suffer struggle and become weak and stressed you really have to pay close attention to this melon before you know you I mean in order to get some really nice sized fruit now the fruit on this canary they get bigger than a large cantaloupe or about the size of a very large honeydew melon you know they are a delicious delicious melon and if you want to try it before you try to grow it just find any organic market and see if you can get your hands on some canary melon okay so that's one i'm definitely happy to be putting back on the homestead again and last but not least you all when it comes to like our one of our favorite garden snacks i know we have like uh, the black cherry tomato, we get gold nugget tomatoes. We're excited about all those little tomatoes. We're very excited about those. Y'all know how I feel about the black cherry tomato. I love that. It is a delicious, to me, it's the best tasting cherry tomato. There is. <laughs> Unless somebody can prove me wrong. That's the best tasting cherry tomato there is. It's called black cherry. And we have grown it in the past. And I absolutely love that cherry tomato it is sweet it got a little bit of acid but it's sweet it's delicious it's just i don't know what to tell you it's delicious <laughs> but you are this one now many of you have asked about this and i wish i could have found the one that i love the most this is the one that mr h loved he loved this and i wish i could have found the one that i love but i couldn't right and this right here, you all, is the Aunt Molly's ground cherry. Aunt Molly's ground cherry. Let me see. You can see how small these seeds are. Let me turn them around so you can see how small these seeds are. See how small they are? Teensy tiny seeds, right? But you all, once you start them, you only need to start a few depending on how many plants you want because this itty bitty little seed here, wait that itty bitty little seed will produce a bush about two and a half to three feet tall that can bush out two to three and a half feet now it's going to be long in diameter about three feet wide and, and some of them can get even bigger than that it's a bush it doesn't require any tre trellising whatsoever it will hold its own okay it will hold its own. It doesn't need any help. It will hold its own. But one thing I can tell you is that these little fruit are delicious. They make an excellent little garden snack while you're out there gardening. Now, last year, last garden season, 
we didn't plant any ground cherries, not any. The year prior we did, but we didn't plant any. And guess what? They came back on their own with a vengeance because when the ground cherries are ripe, they grow inside of these cute little husks, right? If you've ever seen a tomatillo in the grocery store, Aunt Molly's ground cherries are kind of in that same family. They grow inside of a husk. And when the ground cherries are ripe on the inside of that husk, they do exactly what the name implies. They fall to the ground, okay? Now, here's the thing about that. When they fall to the ground, <laughs> if you don't collect them right away, Sometimes the ground cherry can end up being buried in the dirt, you know, or ants will get to it because they are sweet. They're very sweet. And so ants could get to it. But if those seeds get in the ground, they will go there and be dormant and they will come back again, <laughs> just like ours did, right? In fact, we even had ground cherries in places we didn't even plant them, which made me feel like one of the grandbabies when they were eating them, they just kind of tossed the rest of it into one of the garden beds and wasn't thinking. And then we had ground cherries coming up in the garden in places they shouldn't have been, you know, but they are absolutely delicious. And I'm hoping this year, I'm going to deliberately plant um, an entire 25 foot row of ground cherries this year, intentionally, because my goal is and I don't know if I need this many, but I want to get them all at once. I don't want to have to keep waiting on one or two plants to produce what I need. So I'm going to go ahead and just plant them all at once. It's probably going to be about 10 plants, I'll say. Yeah, about 10, because I got to give them plenty of room to grow. But the goal is I want to make some ground cherry jam. Yes. And if the jam is going to taste anything like the ground cherries, this is going to be good. Okay. So I'm very excited about growing the ground cherries and y'all know we got the bird gherkins. I wish that we didn't lose so many when I dropped them down the drain because those ground, I mean, those bird gherkins and the Kushaw seeds y'all are flying out of here. Remember y'all, I know y'all buying a ton of these bird gherkins, but remember, don't plant all of those bird gherkins in any place you don't want them to show up again, okay? Because they will come back again. Just like we talked about the um, Aunt Molly's ground cherries, for some reason, you plant those bird gherkins. If, you, if a bird gherkin gets dropped on the ground or left on the ground and makes contact with that dirt, it's going to be dormant. But next spring, you will see those bird gherkins come back. All right. So if you want, plant them in an area where, <laughs> where um, you don't mind if they come back again. Okay. You don't mind because we had like tons of them this year and we didn't plant one. All of those were left over from seeds that made ground contact. Well, not this year, but last year. The ones that we got last year were ones that we had from, or the seeds made ground contact from the year prior. Yeah, from the year prior. And we ended up with tons of bird gherkins last season. Y'all saw all them bird gherkins we had. We had a lot of them, and they were good. <laughs> And we were able to take a lot of those seeds and make them available for all of you. Okay. So just remember that. And, and my tip on that with those bird gherkins is that you want to trellis them. Now, if you plant them, you're going to plant about two or three seeds in a tray, in a container, in a cup or whatever, just about two or three seeds. Can you start them directly? Yeah, you can, you know, but you know, if you're going to start your seeds in containers, about two or three seeds, okay? And you'll be surprised at how many burger cans you get just from planting those two or three seeds in one container. And then, of course, once they all sprout and germinate, you'll put them all in one hole or wherever you're planting them at. You're going to keep them all together. You're not going to separate them, okay? But you do have to transplant them out um, 
in the ground, okay? Can you grow them in a container? Yeah, just make sure you got a big enough container to sustain that root system on those burr gherkins and make sure you have a trellis because they are gonna run, all right? All right, now, the next book I wanna talk to you all about, last but not least, now, this book right here, you all, I recommend this book, not, like I said, not just for um, uh, new gardeners, but all of us who are existing gardeners, right? This book has so much information in it. I mean, it has a lot. It's, first of all, it's called The Vegetable Gardener's Bible, okay? And this book is also on our Amazon shop. But this Vegetable Gardener's Bible, it talks about so much. It goes in depth, more than just um, planting crops, but it talks about irrigation. It talks about pests. It gives you the definitions of things that you probably didn't understand. It talks about composting methods. It has a lot of information in here, y'all. It talks about the crops itself. Like, for example, this is right on time. Look at this. This is talking about pole beans, the growth habit, the best method for growing them, giving you all of the information that you need, how to properly fertilize, all of that. These, this book has a lot of information in it for new gardeners. Is that what I think it is? Oh, no, it's not. But anyway, it, it gives you a whole lot. It, it kind of reminded me of that Yamada cream watermelon, but that's called Yellow Doll. But in any case, it gives you a lot of information on how to properly grow, fertilize, compost, um, trellis, all of that. It talks about so much in this Vegetable Gardener's Bible. And I know that there was somebody who, um, I think somebody either commented or sent me a message or something because they kept seeing all this little green poop all over their um garden plants and they didn't know what it was well they didn't call it poop they they didn't know what it was <laughs> they didn't know what it was but it was a bunch of little green balls you know and i had to let them know that what they're looking for is a tomato hornworm and some people think that tomato hornworms will just attack your tomatoes but they won't you know there are other crops that tomato hornworms like as well and so when you start seeing those little green balls everywhere, just know those are the droppings from a tomato hornworm and they will decimate your plants, your crop overnight, especially if you have more than one, they will destroy it, okay? So you always wanna look for tomato hornworm uh, droppings, even cabbage worms, their droppings too. You know, cabbage worms, they love your brassicas. And so help being able to like identify all of the garden pests, especially when you're new to gardening, being able to identify those pests and then how to get rid of them. This book has a lot of that information in it, okay? It even has some information about Omri listed pest control, right? which is good for if you're growing, whether you're growing organically or not, you may not want to use harmful chemicals in your garden. Who does? I know I don't. I'm not eating. You are what you eat. <laughs> so I'm not using, in fact, many of you know, even though we've had BT, we still got it. We got spinosad. We still got it. We got Nemo. Never been open. <laughs> because Mrs. H has a very difficult time putting anything on her vegetables. Even though I can see the pest just going after it, I try to deal with it manually. You know, I will pick the hornworms off and the cabbage moths and, and all of that. I will try to handle it uh, uh, manually to keep from spraying anything on our gardens, right? And not that Omri listed uh, pesticides are harmful to you they're safe to use it's just my personal preference okay so you don't have to do that you can do what you choose but one thing i'm going to tell you you all no matter what books you get right now is a great time to start investing in books that you can start reading over the winter months and make sure that before you start growing food that you kind of you know kind of freshen up the mind a little bit on things that we may have forgotten you know what i'm saying because sometimes we forget more than what some people know when it comes to this garden 
because we've just been doing it so long so it's good to have a refresher right and so i think these are some good refreshers and i have several other books but i don't want to like overload today and in fact i might do that i might do a video talking about just some of my favorite books okay but in any case i'm gonna say you know if you're getting started in gardening start with definitely something that can teach you how to save seeds that can help you identify pests and fertilizers how to start a compost pile and i know we can watch a million videos but you all it's good to pick up this book and read right all right y'all so that's gonna do it thank y'all so much again for joining me today it's still raining outside but hey i i don't i don't mind the rain i feel like god knows exactly what what he doing he don't need our help <laughs> So um, I'm going to get back to work. I have to get more seed orders out. And um, again, thank y'all so much. Our seed, uh, seed shop is going to be ahomesteadheart.com. That's www.ahomesteadheart.com. And even on our website at the very bottom of our homepage, there is a link to our Amazon shop. And it'll take you right to where you can get these books from. Okay? All right, y'all. So that's going to do it for this video. I got to get back to work. I got to get back to work. Yes, I do. But y'all, thank y'all so much for joining me today and for watching Homestead Heart. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and give our video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos that we upload to our channel. Bud, don't start looking at me like this until I'm on video. He ignore me. He'll come by every now and then, but then he'll ignore me too. But he's sitting here staring at me like, when are you going to end this? You've been sitting here, lady, for almost 30 minutes. I know, bud. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, y'all. You ain't even speaking to people. You ain't speak. Well, fine. Okay, go get your doll. I'll play with you for a minute. Go on, go get it. Go on, go get it. Hand it to me. Come on. It's over there. You wasting time. Oh, you gotta go outside? You gotta use it. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching Homestead Heart. I can't say what he did. <laughs> I can't tell y'all what he did. <laughs> Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. I'm gonna see y'all in the next video. <laughs> Bud, stop. You just.